some difficulties with the camera this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We want to thank everyone for joining us from Kenya, Africa, Nigeria, Tanzania, Australia, Pakistan, Jamaica, and here in northeastern North Carolina from Ahoski to Windsor to Williamston to Janesville, and all over the United States of America, we thank you for joining us here at Growing Together Ministries Church in Williamston, North Carolina. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Thank you, Growing Together Ministry Trio. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord for the beautiful music and the Spirit of God that has moved so far in our service yes. today. Amen. 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 It has been a good day 
to be in the house of God. Before I go any farther in the message, I just want to remind you, Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we will be having a special Thanksgiving service and Pastor Ronnie Connor will be preaching Wednesday night a very special Thanksgiving service right here. We'll start at 7 p.m. Eastern District Time and, and we'll go live right after our worship. That'll probably be somewhere about 7.20, 7.30 in that neighborhood on Wednesday night. Uh, and we just want to celebrate Thanksgiving. Amen. And we're looking forward to the message from Pastor Ronnie Connor on Wednesday night. So let's turn to Romans chapter 10. I'm going to read the verses I want to cover, and I normally don't do that. I normally take it verse by verse. But today, before we pray, I'm going to read these verses. As you know, I do things different about every Sunday. No service is the same. So you're used to it by now. Romans chapter 10, we'll begin reading at verse 9. If you're watching us, in which I know that thousands will watch in the next few days all over the world, I'm asking you, if you would, to get your Bible. Go find your Bible and I want you to connect with the Word of God because you're using your cell phone. 96% of the people that watch us are doing it through their cell phones. So you need the Word of God with you right now. We've got about 4% worldwide that are using a, la a laptop computer. But go to Romans chapter 9, verse 9, and I want you to read this with me because I want you to receive from God today. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Verse 10, Romans chapter 10. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. Shall not be ashamed. Amen. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. Verse 13, Romans chapter 10. For whosoever, that means anywhere, anyone, Amen. shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? How beautiful are the feet of them who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 16, Romans chapter 10, if you're just joining us. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of the scripture. We pray, Lord, now that you would touch lives here in Williamston, North Carolina, here in Martin County. 
Lord, for those many that will gather here, that, Lord, they would receive from heaven today for all over North Carolina, into Venezuela, into Africa, into Jamaica, into Australia, into France, into Pakistan, into Israel, all over the world. May they receive from the Word of God, from Romans chapter 10 today, God. May they open their ears that they may receive from heaven today. That they do not leave here void, but they leave here filled yes. with your Holy Spirit, yes. empowered to face the enemy. Yes. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord. cover me in the blood of Calvary's cross right now. Cover me in the blood of Calvary's cross right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm using for the title, Confess the Word, Not How You Feel. Amen. Confess the Word of God. I'm not talking about confess the Word of David Ray. Confess the word of God, not how you feel on this Sunday morning, or it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or next week you're watching this broadcast. Confess the word. And how do you confess the word of God? Jesus. You must be willing to open it. It's not enough to just hear the word of God on Sunday morning or online and sitting home being lazy. But you must be willing to get into the word of God. Confess the word of God, not how you feel. You may feel sick this morning. You may feel bad uh, in your physical body. You may be feeling negative in your mental mind this morning. But it's not based on how you feel this morning. Our relationship with God is not based on your feelings. The feelings are the caboose. They go last. I can do without the caboose. But I've got to have the locomotive, which is the fact, which is the word of God. Amen. And behind the locomotive of the train, there is the faith. And you know in the old trains, you've got to shoot the wood in to keep it burning. Amen. you got to keep on moving it in. So how do you keep your faith going? You must keep reading the word of God. God. Amen. You cannot neglect God's word. That's right. And there is a problem in our churches today. And it's a major problem. Just because you attend church faithfully does not mean you're saved. Amen. 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 You must confess the word of God in your everyday life. When problems come, do you go to the word of God or do you go to others? And I've said this before, but it's very important for me to receive this today and for you to receive it. We need to run to the word of God. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, there is power in opening your mouth, on, dear amen. brothers and sisters amen. and young folks. Jesus. There is power in opening your mouth. Amen. And I'm not talking to, to talk hot air. Amen. There's a lot of hot air being talked among the Christian community today. I'm talking about 
speaking the word of God, the word of God that we've got so far from. Because we have become a society, we because they've got prophet in front of their name, and I'm going to go there again this Sunday because it needs to be reinforced. Because they've got prophet behind their name or bishop in front of their name, that everything they speak is a truth. We're finding out a lot of it they didn't hear from God. Hello? I told my wife in private that I'd sure be in the prayer closet asking God to forgive me for lying on him. Come on, amen. Amen. It's that serious. When you say you heard from God, you but a minute. And the only sure way is through the word of God. We got a lot of people wanting to be celebrity preachers. And your talk finds you out. Those that are right with God can see through your talk, through the confessing of your mouth. There's power in your talking this morning. You can bring life to your spiritual being or you can bring death to your spiritual being. You can lose your salvation. You that are, are, are so puffed up and think your sin is less than the neighbor that lives next door to you. I want to stop there for a minute. And I want to make this very clear throughout the world. And here in Martin County, sin is sin Amen. in the word of God. Sin is sin in the Word of God. There's no big sins and no little sins. You know why we do degrees of sin? Because we've listened to so many false prophets that have stood behind the pulpits all over Martin County, all over Bertie County, all over Hertford County, all over North Carolina, and all over the world because they had a title. We, we, were, we become their sucker because we did not go to the Word of God. I say to you today, please go to the Bible. Yes, amen. Don't take everything this preacher tells you. Go to the Bible. Go to the Bible. Read the Bible. That's why it's so important. Every day, and we have done this, and we're starting the third year online through Facebook, and we now put the passages together and put it on Facebook every Friday. Then I'll release it again probably this afternoon on Monday, the, the daily reading of the Word of God where you can read the Word of God through once every year. That's important, folks. Yes, amen. Just because you think you know the story about creation in, Je- in Genesis chapter 1 does not be- belittle or take away from the fact you need to read Genesis chapter 1 again. Amen. Amen. Just because you think you know it all about Daniel in the lion's den, you need to go back to Daniel and read it again. Because if you are truly a child of God, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to your mind and you're going to learn something new from the Word of God every time you receive. You read it. Receive this today. I'm not mad at nobody. I just preach like this because I am involved in what I say. I mean what I'm saying. I feel God. Glory. I feel God. I feel God. And I love you even though my face is bloodshot red. I love you. It's time. You wake up.
of these lazy preachers uh, and you get around somebody that's anointing of God and preaches the word of God. Glory! I'm not mad at none of you. I'm not mad at you over the, all over around the world. I love you. I love you and love to wrap my arms around you. I don't care if you're black, white, red, blue, purple, or yellow. I love you. Glory. What did God do in 1993? I'm still on the confessing, confess the word, not how you feel. What did God do to a preacher, a little small church in Conway, North Carolina, he spoke into my mind through his Holy Spirit, growing together ministry. There was a reason God gave me this ministry Amen. in 1993 in that little small town uh, in Northampton County. There's a reason he gave it to me. Growing together because that's what God wants, wants us to do. Amen. But we got to stop the junk. We're confessing stuff that's not of the Bible to look good. Women look pretty. Men to look better. We need to start confessing the word of God in your private lives. Amen. Yeah. You wonder why things are going against you. It's because you're not confessing the word of God. You look back. And, and how much you talk in a 24-hour period, you can, you can weigh it. Is, are you more into reading the Word of God or are you more into gossiping and trying to down somebody else? And then you wonder why, oh me, oh my, we wonder. What you confess is what you become, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. And shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Pertains to the bodily resurrection of Christ. Do you actually really believe that he was raised from the dead? Do you really? As I look over and online, do you really believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. And I stop. Do you really? Jesus. To hear the confessions that come out of your mouth, I would think you were a sinner. Amen. I would think you were not right with God. And I say that with love. Listen to yourself. Talk. Amen. He's a God that can heal you, but if he doesn't heal you, you've got to keep moving on. Amen. That's right. He's a God that loves you, but he didn't promise you a rose garden. Jesus. But everyone believes that this Christian experience here in America was so spoiled rotten. We, we should get the best. We're for troubled times because of the words that have been spoken out of our minds and it's mostly the Christian's fault in America. Amen. Because we believe lies. We believe lies. And we've suckered into it. But so do you really believe in God this morning? Don't tell me how many years you've been saved. How many years have you grown in God? Amen. Are you still talking the same way you talked 10 years ago? You're hurting me. It's time to confess positivity into your life. Amen. It's time to confess words that will help you, that will build you up. I am, when you look in that mirror, I am good looking. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Don't talk about your hair is just not right. Say positive things about yourself. Build yourself up. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Build yourself up. You are somebody this morning. You're not on the ground. 
And you talk negative. You talk like somebody has stole your 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 last cat, your last dog. Come on, amen. When he's been so good to you. Amen. He's been so good to you. Look where he brought you from. Amen. Look where he brought you from. Yeah. Confess amen. the word, not amen. how you feel this morning. Yes, I don't feel all that good this morning, but I'm confessing the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not based on my caboose experience. Come on. It's based on the locomotive that is God, the fact of God. And I'll keep reading the word. If I'll keep reading the word, the, the wood is going in and the train is going to keep going down the track. Amen. Glory to God. The train will still keep moving. But if all I'm doing, I'm sitting by here, you can't throw in to the fact of the word of God. You can't throw in your negativity and think God's going to bless you. Come on, somebody. Amen. You can't speak negativity into the lives or your personal life and think God is going to turn around and bring you positivity. Amen. You've got to confess truthfulness Amen. and you confess the Bible when you feel like crying, Jesus. when you feel like giving up, what's the use? Come on. But I trust God. I confess the fuel of the Holy Spirit operating in my life today. Yes. I confess it. You shall be saved. And I'm going to read that verse 9 again, Romans chapter 10, because some of you... You've been in church for, for a lifetime and you're not saved. Sorry to bust your bubble. There are some preachers preaching they're not saved. Jesus. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Amen. and shall believe in your heart yes. that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Let's get saved this morning. Let's get right. Let's become a believer this morning. Let's leave this world behind with all its troubles and all its cares and what you're facing this afternoon. And let's just take some time to rejoice in God. Rejoice in God right now. Give him a hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, for my salvation. I praise your holy name. I give you a hallelujah right now. I give you a hallelujah right now. I rejoice in you, God. I rejoice in you, God. I give you a hallelujah right now. Glory. I give you a hallelujah right now. I know my feelings have got in the way. Your feelings have got in the way of your victory today. Amen. Your feelings have robbed you of many years. You could have been very successful in God. Get out of your feelings. Confess the word and not how you feel this morning. Confess the word. You go and you read the word. For with the heart, Romans chapter 10, verse 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. You're going to have to excuse me all over. I've got to take the tie off. I'm hot. You've got to confess salvation. Have you really confessed you, salvation? Jesus. Come on. If you confess yeah. salvation, you move in a different way. Amen. 
you yes. you you leave the click, the church clicks. Come on, bro. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Just because mama went there for 30 years doesn't mean I have to go there if they're spiritually dead and the preacher's dead in the pulpit. A lot of folks are attending churches in Martin County and all over this world because mama or daddy went there. How dare you tell me to go somewhere else? Are you being matured in God? Or are you living on a dead legacy that's dying? So many churches are dying because we're not confessing God. We're living on what mama and daddy did and what grandmama and granddaddy did. It's time to confess life for yourself today. Confess the word, not how you feel or how your family treated you. For the scripture says, verse 11, Romans chapter 10, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. I see so many Christians walking around with their head down. So ashamed. Why are you ashamed? You're just as good as I've ever been on my best day or my worst day. We're all equal in the sight of God at the feet of the cross of Calvary. Amen. Age don't mean nothing. Why do you act ashamed? Jesus. Come on, bro. Why do you act ashamed and want to hide when God has forgiven you? The creator of the universe has set you free. But you sure don't confess it in the way you talk. Jesus. Stop being ashamed this morning. Walk in the victory of God, dear brothers and sisters. Walk in the victory of God. Stop moping and groaning and complaining. And get right with God. Amen. Time is drawing near. How, how do you feel that God is looking down at you right now, looking down at me, and you walk around at your job, or if you don't work, when you go in the grocery store and, and your head is hung down? Ashamed. How do you think God looks at his, at his, at his daughter or his son? How do you think Jesus looks at his son or daughter that walks around with their head down like they've got nothing and they've got Jesus, but they're not confessing the word of God. They're dependent on somebody else to take care of them. They're dependent on somebody else to talk to them. And they've got God. But what does the word say? Shall not be ashamed if you're a believer this morning. Amen. Amen. Don't walk around with your head, Lord. Hold your head up. You're a child of the King this morning. Amen. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Verse 12, Romans chapter 10. In other words, we're all even at the foot of the cross. Amen. I'm no better than you are and you're no better than I am. I felt and feel the Holy Spirit just moving. Because somehow I can't get past that Jew and Greek shall not be ashamed there in verse 11. Reread that this afternoon shall not be ashamed no matter what your family members have done. Amen. If you have asked God to forgive you of all your sins, you're right with God. Amen. How dare anyone want to bring up your sin again? Let me repeat that. How dare 
anyone that calls themselves a Christian. Bring up your sin again when it's under the blood of Calvary's cross. How dare them do that? They're a hypocrite. A hypocrite brings up the sins of other folks that got right with God. How dare you do that? How dare you, brothers and sisters, all over the world, poke fun and bring up folks' past publicly because you think you're better than they are. They're just as right with God as you are. Amen. You're the one who needs to be in the prayer closet more than they need to be. Jesus. God's moving. I didn't get this message until yesterday afternoon. Come on. <laughs> I didn't get this message. I hardly never get a message for Sunday until Saturday night. Because I let the Holy Spirit lead me in what I say. And if I ain't got nothing to say, it's time to shut up and sit down and let somebody else preach. Amen. Somebody needs to hear this today. Amen. All over the world. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. The riches of grace will be given to all who truly call upon the Lord. Verse 12 of Romans chapter 10. We're all equal. The blood of Jesus Christ that delivered me from the junk I was in. And I don't need to list my sins before you because you would fall and crawl and fall on the floor. You, preacher, and after I had pastored churches, See, I'm a man that's honest. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to impress you. I don't even try to impress my wife. And I'm married to her. Even those sins, he's forgiven me. I look back, and it was some mess I got involved. But I now confess Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Because I was running from the call of God. Jesus. Because when you preach the word of God like I preach it with God, your friends are very few. Come on. Amen. Those that yep. laugh at you and mock you are plenty. Yep. Because they don't have the same anointing that God has given me. Yep. And they're jealous. And I can't tone down what God has put in me. Amen. Amen, brother. Verse 13. For whosoever anyone shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Verse 14. The great sin of mankind is the sin of unbelief. Your unbelief is causing you not to move forward in God. Come on. I'm talking to the Christians. Your unbelief is causing you not to move forward in God. You're worried about everybody else, but not poor old me. You need to worry about poor old me. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? It is the business of the church to take the gospel to the world. Verse 14 of Romans chapter 10. And I need to close. I need to, I need to, I need to uh, start coming into the uh, finish line on this Sunday with you folks. It's, it's not our job here in Martin County to build the biggest church. Our job 
is to use the resources that are available on, to Amen. reach all over the world. Amen. And we just didn't start when the Santa of whatever y'all want to call it started in March. We'd been online at that time already three years. It's through online. And we move forward through Facebook, through YouTube, through LinkedIn, through Vimeo, through six different podcast stations, and on and on I could go to the glory of God to reach people. That's what we're called to do. Not have a big building. I believe this is a nice building, but I've already told you it's not big enough. Because there are people watching every week. They might not watch but two to three minutes. But they're just waiting to see what move we're going to make next. And they're wanting to come here. But because their faith is weak. Because of this sin since March. They stay away. But they want to come because they want to receive the word of God. Amen. They're tired of fluff. They're tired of the worship team is more important than the word of God. They're tired of that mess. And how shall they hear without a preacher? This reveals God's method of proclaiming his message. It takes crazy folks like me to proclaim the word of God. And we need to proclaim the word of God. I cannot give up. I walked in here today, and I could go further, and I won't. I walked in here today with a heavy burden. My wife's aware of it completely. But all it showed me is that we're doing it right. And the devil was mad. And not only is the devil mad, we've got other folks that call themselves Christians. Jesus. They're mad. Confess the word and not how you feel this morning. I'm feeling right now, I'm ready to go eat lunch. There's other things. But what do I need to do? Confess the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I won't... Uh, Pastor Larry to come up and greet the people and say what's on his heart and then I'd like to have as we do every Sunday Pastor Ronnie to come back and do the salvation call to the world Pastor Larry Lilly Good morning everyone you that are watching here in the sanctuary. And I'm going to do like my pastor was saying it this morning. I look good this morning, praise God. Amen. You somebody, sure somebody may disagree with that, but I look good in God this morning, praise God. Hallelujah. If you don't like the way I look, you talk to God because he made this face, praise God. Glory. He made it just the way I am, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, I like that. Uh, My phone's been going off the hook this morning. And uh, uh, Richard Ward got up this morning and went out to feed his chickens like he always does. He didn't come back in, so his wife went out there to find out what had happened, and, and he fell dead in the yard this morning. So he's in heaven today. Amen. So that's the exciting part. He's in glory today. And so my phone's been going off like crazy this morning, the different ones and so forth. Uh, Pastor Ronnie Connor pastored him uh, for some time up there at Lighthouse. But anyway, but Richard Ward is in heaven. We talked a couple of weeks ago, had a good time together and fellowship and talking and so forth. And one thing or not, that man was right with God. Amen. So I said that to say this this morning, not to try to turn away from the way that God's moving this morning is, it pays to have your heart right with God. Because that could have been me this morning that went out of here. Yes, that sir. could have been you this morning that went out of here. And if your heart's not right, guess where you're going? H-E-L-L. -L. 
Preach, brother. Amen. That's the word of God. Well, I, I, God is a good God. He won't send anybody to hell. No, He won't. But He gives you a choice to choose heaven or hell. That is your choice. That's my choice. He made a way of escape through His Son, Jesus, that we could have life and have it more abundantly, praise God. I am so glad that I confessed Him years ago and got my heart right with God that I know that if I was to die today, where I'm going. And you know, yes. God has put in my spirit, you know, I need to go see Richard Ward. I need to go just to fellowship with him. I need to go see Richard. Guess what? He's gone. The only time I see Richard Ward again, as far as being able to talk to him, is on the other side, praise God, when God calls us home. Amen. So pray for Sister Faye. Pray for uh, his, his children and grandchildren and things of that nature. But uh, he's in heaven. Amen. Uh, I, I had a pastor friend of mine. Uh, he pastored a church in Colorado so many, many, many years ago. And he had an individual that worked in the church. We also drove the, the church bus and said, we're going we're gonna to need to get together about 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon and have a meeting. Well, they all departed from church. And guess what? About 30 minutes after they left church, he got a telephone call from the man's wife and he just died of a heart attack. We never know. That's right. We never know. Richard Ward had plans this morning to come back in the house and go to church. Richard Ward was one of the people that took up the offering in church. Every, he was faithful every Sunday. I don't care how bad his knee was. If he had to use a cane or whatever, he would come up and take up the offering, the tithes and the offerings every Sunday. He was very faithful uh, in, in, in church. But God said, today is your day. Today is your day that you're coming home, praise God. So thanks of God, as Ronnie, the pastor Ronnie Connor comes up to talk to you about the sinner's prayer, getting your heart right with God. This is real. I'm not telling you some fairy tale. This actually happened uh, probably about three hours or so ago that Richard Ward was called home to glory, Pastor Ronnie Connor. Praise the Lord. Glad to have you with us today. Thank you, Brother David, Brother Larry. Thank you for that powerful word this morning, Brother David. Yes, we need Jesus in our life. And people, as you can look around today, we see the sin that's going on here and going there. It's a heart problem this morning. And every man has a problem with his heart if it's not right with the Lord. And like Brother Larry said, uh, our condolence and our prayers go out to the loved ones of Richard's family this morning. But I want to ask you this morning, could that have been you this morning? Or is it going to be you tomorrow when you're not able to be here any longer, but you've gone on to the other side? There's only one way to know for sure, and that is through Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. As I beckon with you this morning, as I call and beg you to call upon the name of the Lord, as sure as you were born, there's going to come a day, unless the rapture takes place first, that we all shall face the payment of death. So I'm going to yes. invite you now to say the sinner's prayer with us this morning and to ask the Lord to come into your life. And just repeat after me, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm a sinner and cannot save myself. But Lord, I believe what your word has spoken today. Hallelujah. That if we confess by mouth, Hallelujah. not with our heart, I meant with our mind, but Lord, it has to be with our mouth. Yes. And to believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So Lord, I'm asking you now to come into my life and to forgive me of my sins, my transgressions, and my iniquities. Yes. And Lord, as I receive you as my Lord and my Savior, I'm asking you today to be Lord over my life. And I welcome you into my life, dear Heavenly Father. And I thank you for saving me yes. and washing me with the blood of Jesus Christ today. For it's in Jesus' name we ask and pray. If you have said that prayer this morning, I want to welcome you to the family of God. But the Bible says that confession is made by mouth and believe with our hearts that we are saved. It's a walk by faith, not by works, or good deeds, but it's only by the faith of reading the Word of God. Find your Bible, read your Bible, study your Bible. Amen. A good book to start in is First John, 
and read through First John, then go to the 1 and 2 and 3 of John and read them and get a better understanding of what Christ has done for us and throughout this world today. It's because of Jesus today that we can be saved. No other name whereby man and woman, boy and girl can be saved. So I want to welcome you to the family of God. If you have said that prayer this morning and had meant it your heart and believed by faith, then you are saved. Thank you, and we love you, and God bless you. Amen. Brother David? Amen. Amen. just want to, to thank all of you that have joined us today for my Muslim brothers. We love you. My wife showed me the comment. We love you. Oh, Holy Spirit, touch the live audience now and touch those that will, the thousands that will watch this broadcast through the coming week. Lord, that they would find the Bible, the 66 books, the Holy Bible, and they would begin to read it. And Father, they would believe in the cross of Calvary that you died on the cross of Calvary for all our sins and you arose on the third day and you are with the Father you sit on the right hand of the Father right now and you're coming back one day for those that have accepted you as personal Lord and Savior it's not a joke it's real living for you, Father. Touch the lives all over the world right now. We love you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We leave you. We'll join you again for Bible Ingredients Tuesday night by 7 p.m. Bible Ingredients is every Tuesday night. It's a 10-minute broadcast. And uh, we'll share that with you Tuesday night. Then Wednesday night, we'll be live. We'll be right back here at Growing Together Ministry Church here in Williamston, 514 Park Street. We're directly behind the Wall Greens right here in Williamston, North Carolina. And Pastor Ronnie Connor will be preaching and we'll have a Thanksgiving message. We'll have worship before that and then he will preach. We love you all, and God loves you. Have the best Sunday afternoon of your entire life. And if you're listening on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of next week, have the best week of your life. We love you all, and God loves you. Good day. <laughs>